15. How long should inquiry be practiced? As long as there are impressions of objects in the mind, so long the inquiry, who am I, is required. As thoughts arise, they should be destroyed then and there, in the very place of their origin, through inquiry. If one resorts to contemplation of the self unintermittently until the self is gained, that alone would do. As long as there are enemies within the fortress, they will continue to sally forth. If they are destroyed as they emerge, the fortress will fall into our hands. 16. What is the nature of the self? What exists in truth is the self alone. The world, the individual soul, and God are appearances in it. Like silver in mother of pearl, these three appear at the same time and disappear at the same time. The self is that where there is absolutely no I thought. That is called silence. The self itself is the world. The self itself is I. The self itself is God. All is Shiva. The self. 17. Is not everything the work of God? Without desire, resolve, or effort, the sun rises, and in its mere presence, the sunstone emits fire, the lotus blooms, water evaporates, people perform their various functions, and then rest. Just as in the presence of the magnet, the needle moves. It is by virtue of the mere presence of God that the souls governed by the three cosmic functions or the fivefold divine activity perform their actions and then rest in accordance with their respective karmas. God has no resolve, no karma attaches itself to him. That is like worldly actions not affecting the sun, or like the merits and demerits of the other four elements not affecting all pervading space. 18. Of the devotees, who is the greatest? He who gives himself up to the self that is God is the most excellent devotee. Giving oneself up to God means remaining constantly in the self without giving room for the rise of any other thoughts other than that of the self. Whatever burdens are thrown on God, he bears them. Since the supreme power of God makes all things move, why should we, without submitting ourselves to it, constantly worry ourselves with thoughts as to what should be done and how, and what should not be done and how not? We know that the train carries all loads. So after getting on it, why should we carry our small luggage on our head to our discomfort instead of putting it down in the train and feeling at ease? 19. What is non-attachment? As thoughts arise, 
destroying them utterly without any residue. In the very place of their origin is non-attachment. Just as the pearl diver ties a stone to its waist, sinks to the bottom of the sea, and there takes the pearls, so each one of us should be endowed with non-attachment, dive within oneself and obtain the self-pearl. 20. Is it not possible for God and the Guru to effect the liberation of the soul? God and the Guru will only show the way to liberation. They will not by themselves take the soul to the state of liberation. In truth, God and the Guru are not different. Just as the prey which has fallen into the jaws of the tiger has no escape, so those who have come within the ambit of the Guru's gracious look will be saved by the Guru and will not get lost. Yet, each one should, by his own effort, pursue the path shown by God or Guru and gain liberation. One can know, one can know oneself only with one's own eye of knowledge and not with someone else's. Does he who is Rama require the help of a mirror to know that he is Rama? 21. Is it necessary for one who longs for liberation to inquire into the nature of categories, patvas? Just as one who wants to throw away garbage has no need to analyze it and see what it is, so one who wants to know the self has no need to count the number of categories or inquire into their characteristics. What he has to do is to reject altogether the categories that hide the self. The world should be considered like a dream. 